Welcome back to the Geometric View, episode 59, season 5. Today we get into the unified field, the global electric circuit, and human behavior, Electric Geology Kentucky, and EPEMC, a group of ours with Ramon, Extended Plasma Electromagnetic Cosmology. You can find us on Rumble also on the podcast called The Pulse. Episode 45 is the episode of this. I'm Buddy James, your host. Let's get into it. Let's get into the circuit. We greatly appreciate your support. The best way to donate to us is on PayPal. Just send money directly to goldenscaling at gmail.com. Thank you very much. A conversation with me, Nick, Andy, and Ramon. A lot of people don't understand. A lot of people don't understand what people are talking about when they're when they keep using so many different terms. Like the ether is um, well, energy. We, we, Go ahead. For for one thing, we're uh, you all know that we're uh, infinite souls. So we're going to always talk about the ether, uh, no matter what era. I mean, you know, even if we didn't talk about it today, it would happen again in a few months anyway. So, but it, you're you're not wrong there. Uh, it would be good for the audience to to hear uh, this kind of discussion for sure. And uh, so to recap, uh, I, I, I said that the, the PIM was the ether field. And if we found ethons, then we would find out that it was just another form of plasma um, because they found dark matter as baryons and cosmic dust. And uh, of course, there are some planets out there that are acting as black bodies and stars that are acting as black bodies. That's also going to make a huge amount of that mass that's been missing. But it's only 50 percent you know half of it turned out to be baryons and then from that uh, i didn't get to hear the the in between but but just now what we were saying was that uh out of the ether flows the numbers and from the force flows the ether but it's all one but it's good to separate it because uh you then you can study it and i was saying that the big g conforms to the fibonacci and that's where we were (laughs) okay continue and and the uh, the way that I worded it and the way that I broke it down here just a minute ago um, is I believe we were using the word prime. It wasn't primal field. What was I saying? I think you were uh, you were saying that these uh, these expressions of the ether seem to repeat in prime numbers. Um, um, uh, uh, there was some kind of circular component. What is? Uh, it's not a grand unified theory. I was I was saying. Um, I was call, I was referring. There's a word that really helps us understand what we're talking about here, um, um, and I was referring to Cosmic Porch because I revert. I, I interviewed her, and she does the number line, and uh, the number line is a breakdown of. It's not the primal field. What was I calling it? Uh, you were saying it's a it's a sequence. It's a, it's the the wave sequence. Um. Cosmicporch.com. Okay, I'm pulling her up. Unified field. This is this is what we need to talk about. This is what what we need to remind viewers and people about. Um, well, you, we can talk you, about the unified ether field if you if you want to, and devote an episode talking about it. The difficulty is that we don't have yet a an anatomy, right? Yeah, we have confirmation yes. of density. Yes, we do. Um, we do have an anatomy, and that's that's why uh, that's what actually um, perked my attention with this conversation here just now. Okay. Um, if you go to cosmicporch.com, uh, you'll see the number line um, and uh, and the unified field. So, wh- could, could you could you show it, buddy, on your screen? Oh yeah, I guess I could share my screen. Except I mean, are you saying that 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 uh, the people at CosmicPorch.com did experiments the same way that those Russians uh, and uh, the people who've made the vertical interferometers? Or what are you saying? If it's just pure theory, I'm not going to be able to go with that. But if it, if they've done some some lab experimentation, I would love to love to know more about it. Okay, here we go. Um, whether it's a lab or not, I've gotten as far as I have uh, um, by pictorial drawings three-dimensional two-dimensional and sure. uh, sculptures sculptures so geometry really speaks here um 
Uh, now, that's, that's true, and I want to make that clear that I agree with Buddy on that, but I also want to make the standard is still empirical evidence. Right. Right. Okay. All right. Go. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, so everybody's a lot of people are talking about what is the ether made of? What is um, the a ether or ether or um, uh, luminous? Uh, what did they used to call it? Luminous, uh, not luminous transient event. Uh, anyway, I, I, you could call it a million things. So, yeah, luminaris ether, I've heard it called, I think, maybe. Yeah, luminaris ether, things like that. So we've been trying to figure out what this is for the longest time, and it makes a lot of sense if you understand the, the composition here and you start start building the substance of the ether um, by using a number line. And number is nothing but cycles. N number is, is, is counting, one, two, three, four, five. It's counting cycles. All frequencies move in cycles. So the number line naturally exudes, or the, the unified field exudes out of the centers of galaxies, um, out of any centers, out of the center of an atom, the atomic nucleus. So this same repeating Bessel function is, is the unified field. As you repeat this, this inverse square Bessel function, which is just a circle inside of a circle inside of a circle. We know that here. But you move, you push it outward as it projects outward um, in progressive growth, and it starts to grow in a progressive manner. You get something called um, that that my friend here calls the uh, the unified field, and you also get something that I call the Doherty set. I'm not the first person that has come up with the Doherty set. I've I've gone into it deep because it's 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 we found it in history for sure. Um, we see it in rocks and carvings. We know what it we know that it is in the Bible. It's literally being talked about as the New Jerusalem, the structure of the New Jerusalem. But you look at what people have been talking about. I mean, think about what what people back in the archaic days would describe the New Jerusalem as they're describing ether. They're describing um this this temple that can be built in order to communicate with the 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 infinite unified field um so um anyway i digress so this field here that uh that my friend here that we're looking at on the the menu i'm i'm wondering if there's more pictures i can go into here home Collaborate images and paper. Okay, here. You can see that she she did the same thing um, that I did, but she's she's interested in different aspects of it. Um, if it's not the same thing I did, it's almost exactly the same thing I did. Her repeating Bessel function might be different. It might not be based off of the inverse square. But you can clearly see that her work and my work are um, are connected. <clears throat> So this is what the this is the substance of the ether, and um, just as Chris from Take Back Space talks about everything being bubbles, um, if you look at this line, this number line here, um, and you zoom in, these are overlapping spheres. That's where the that's where particles coming to existence along that that line there, where overlapping spheres create lenses. And according to Walter Russell, it's a lenticular universe, and it's all based off of lenses. So actually, particles are are uh, these tiny overlapping lenses of spheres, which are ultimately vortices or vortispheres. It's the vortexture. The entire thing is vortexture. It's the singing vorkestra. So um, you can look at the Doherty set, and also you can see how how all this is all this is is a cast eight cascading number system um the unified field is composed of that if indeed the ether is like we're talking about um then you'll see correlations that that the doherty set has found with stellar formations being in the same shapes as the doherty set and not only stellar formations but you get um you get living creatures eventually this number line this geometric quantization of space-time quote-unquote 
um, is uh, builds up the bodies at, for all of the living creatures. It looks it looks to me like um, if you if you looked at the galaxy uh, through the uh, uh, you know through the sideways dimension, uh, I wonder if you'd get these kind of lumps and bubbles going from the extents from the margins of the galaxy down to the center, and it, and if there is some kind of a repeat, repeating fractal uh, fractal shape uh, like like is illustrated right in front of us there. Uh, you know, as as far as a cross section of the galaxy went, uh, would you get if if these represented somehow uh, the the bands where where ether ether if um, the ether forms more uh, or it's kind of a resonant kind of these resonant bands? I suppose like, if, accretion, like the galactic accretion disk, you know, like would it would it yeah. look like that? Yeah. Um, I would say I would say that we're looking. Don Scott would agree um, that we're what we're looking at here is a side view of a Birkeland current. Yeah, um, no, that's so what I would get, say as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You would get. Um, it would be a little different if it would be the side view of a galaxy or other things, but um, what we're seeing, what, what, to put this the simplest way that I could possibly put this, and this is the easiest way I think people can interpret this, is that. This is a cosmic filament. The The reason why her name is the cosmic porch is because she's just sitting on the cosmic porch waiting for the rest of the cosmic residents to, to say, hello, hey, how's it going? Um, this girl goes by a few different names, so I don't know what name she goes by right now. Um, otherwise, I'd, I'd throw her name out there, but we're already on her page. Nonetheless, I met her in person, did some podcasts with her. Um, uh so really crazy story with this girl. Uh, she believes that she can she she chose her next life and she remembers her past lives and she chose to come into this life as an SRA victim from her last life, satanic ritual abuse. And she said she chose to came back come back like that. And I was like, what? So that's when things started getting a little too weird. One of the episodes I didn't even actually push because it got so weird. But this girl, she's she's into it. I mean, when you start understanding, uh, Robert, this is this is the primes. This she's showing off the prime parody right here, and then there's subprime correspondence of the numbers in the number line. So you're right, and uh, it is about the prime numbers, but it's not only about the prime numbers. Um, there's just there's just uh, coherence. In the prime numbers, almost like a um, a resonance or resinging resounding gong um, between the numbers, they're connected. There's a, a connection there for sure. So, real quick, uh, just a real quick recap before I get done here explaining this. It's so simple. It's just the number line. That's what comes out of the sun. The number lines. The the sun spews out this number line, and it creates this geometry, the Doherty set. Um, and the unified field and Birkeland currents and everything else that we hear, but they can be different size currents and they're all based off of the charge. Each, each charge is, is going to be a different size current, just like every frequency that you hear, every um, octave that you hear is a different octave, but it's literally the same string. It's just being um, more, uh, more thrust or more, uh, you know, less, less or more diminishing of the string that's making the sound so it's 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 all spectrum the entire thing is a spectrum and yeah. we are part of it we are in the spectrum yeah. that's all i need to say there yeah that's uh that's pretty cool yeah that is um yeah i'm interested in that looking at the um looking through the side of the uh the Birkeland current, um, or, or along the length of the Birkeland current, more likely, I would have thought that would be a uh, um, cross section of the length of it all. Um, There's looking down in it. What's what's really weird about the Doherty set is the the same hole that you're looking down there. You see 12 radions, right? There's 12 directions, but you're actually looking down one of those. 
and it goes out the other side. Yeah. Um, and, and the same one, the same diameter and same actually geometry that you see in this entire image. If you were to go off of one branch, that geometry is identical as the geometry that's going right down the center. Um, so the same thing happening on each limb is happening in every limb coming out radially from the center. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you said you wanted to see a side view of a Birkeland current. There's a, there's a decent one. It's not the best picture. Um, but that reminded me of, uh, this, this one girl who we used to work with. Let's see if we can get some of her work up. Hannah. I met her. Hannah Vi. VH. VH. Whoops. Okay, this girl. This girl. Um, I met up with her at the University of Science and Philosophy. She was doing a presentation. She did a presentation right before um, Terrence Howard. Uh, and this is, her site is incredible. The Universe Unraveled is her. Uh, Hannah VH. And she took Walter Russell's drawings and and worked with me um and we worked together on a few projects but her understanding of the inverse square law and the circles that come out of it and octaves and um a Birkeland current from the side view which walter russell drew a lot of Birkeland currents from the side view um Look at that beautiful. Uh, they call that, I guess now the word for that spiral. I call. I've always called it the Russell spiral, but apparently the wor word for this spiral is um, is now the crystal spiral, spelled with a K, K R Y S T A L, crystal mm -hmm. spiral. Um, let's see if I can get. Here's a gravity pulse. Structure of the atom. Look at that. All helical, all uh, inverse cube, inverse square law. Um, here's also, really she's doing one. some pretty good 3D graphics as well there. Yeah, this is this is Walter Russell's spiral motion periodic table of uh, periodic table of elements and the cube, how they fit together. Oh, yeah. Same exact thing as the Doherty set. This is why Walter Russell predicted the um, periodic table of elements, uh, or why he predicted motion to be in a spiral and in a helical path. Um, and the the elements actually form uh, on the where the uh, where the anodes are, not the nodes, on the on the crest of the wave on the current not on the trough, not on the pinch point of his theory there. Another real quick logarithmic spiral of Walter Russell and the periodic table of elements. Oh, this one's great. Yeah, so I was working with this girl for the longest time. Um, the university didn't know if, when I went there if I worked for uh, for DARPA because I said that I worked for DARPA on Facebook and people actually believed me because you can say you work for anything. That was back in the day. So they didn't know if I was like a, uh, some sort of an agent or something. So when we met, I was kept trying to take this <clears throat> this lady out to dinner, but they were like protecting her and like keeping her hidden and and like not allowing anybody to talk to her. Um, whatever. They were just trying to keep her safe, uh, <laughs> safe, safe from the, who knows who this, uh, this possible government organization guy is, but I've definitely, I have no affiliation, not affiliated. That's the way I like, like to stay and keep it. So just, she's got so much more work than just this. This is just a little bit of, of her work. <laughs> 
Well, so there's uh, there's some other people who are very well into it, aren't they? Um, you know, moving along with it. Um, Actually, she kind of she's a civil engineer. Um, I think she lives out in uh, somewhere uh, somewhere Nordic, somewhere in those uh, lands out there. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, a lot of people are onto this. Uh, like I was showing Cosmic Porch, uh, Hannah Vi, or V8. Um, there's some other people, and uh, Robert Grant is onto it. Um, uh, but everybody's onto it in their own way, and they're all describing that it's the universe because it's the fundamental unified field that they're looking at, you know? <laughs> So like when I found it in 2003, when I was 19, I went insane for a few years. Well, I, everyone thought I was going to go insane for a few years. I checked out for sure. And all I could do was stare at the geometry and draw, stare at the geometry and write for two years. It, it takes a hold of you, you know. So here, let me get out of sharing my screen. Everyone seems to be um, arising to these very similar conclusions, but they're all doing it using a uh, different language. And, um, and uh, I think, I think uh, again, uh, the, the sooner we can get this gateway up and running and start defining these terms, uh, so that we actually, uh, um, uh, you know, kind of, kind of give a bit of meat and definition to these terms, so that they can be used more interactively. Because I, I think, I think uh, every every researcher is coming at, at these same phenomena uh, from a just slightly different angle, a slightly different perspective. Um, but I think, I think it's generally uh, the same thing. Uh, like you say, it's a very fundamental. Um, it's a very fundamental uh, geometry, um, and uh, you know, it, it's it's really, it's almost uh, as simple as defining three, four, five triangles. Really, you know, it's uh, it's it's a kind of built-in function of 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 number, like you say. Um, and I think, uh, I think... Are you, are you still seeing my screen? Uh, yes. Okay, cool. Keep going. Yeah, it's, it's a built-in it's a built -in, uh, mathematical series, uh, a geometry that is uh, ex extant. Um, it's obvious to people. Uh, and, yeah, I think, I think all these researchers, uh, it'd, be, it'd be good if they would uh, sort of converge in language, really. Uh, and 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 like a Birkeland current is an, is an understood for, you know phenomena or object. Um, well, it's it's really hard to be able to work with anybody nowadays in twenty twenty two. Even though it seems like it's better connectivity than ever. Um, and I've, everybody has their own theories. So I've started to I've tried to start up several different groups. Um, the Doherty Research, you know, R and D company where we're trying to excuse me where we're trying to do advanced technology and um not only advanced technology but uh plasma physics uh the hyper hyper plasma physics where you get into space um there's there's rockets and things that can be designed i mean there's buildings that can be made there's there's uh there's connectivity with God. Like I said, there's there's a machine that can worship God greater than us. Why don't we build that machine and just sit around it um, and pull in the vibes, you know? Because if you find something that worships God greater than you, um, uh, there's obviously a resonance that comes with that. Uh, and that's probably what we could do. And maybe that's just what the form, maybe that's just what a lot of these things were throughout history that were built is well I'd, I'd agree with that because the the bosnian pyramid they, they say that it's got all sorts of healing properties that the uh, 
the actual the the environment is just uh, is just pr- pushes life forward, and uh, and uh, I've heard I've heard as well that in Stonehenge in uh, the UK uh, that it was a healing site uh, when it was originally built, uh, and these uh, these blue stones had healing properties, but I don't know what they were, but uh, it was. Uh, it was a, a very fertile and life promoting uh, mechanism um, so it, it would be it would be interesting to uh, experiment with these energies completely um, and, I, I uh, think we could I think we could experiment with them with this primitive tools as uh, chimneys fire and uh, and uh, air. That's how simple it is. Uh, these these geometries and patterns and greater uh, utterances of the big G of God, um, these geophony, the sound of God, um, uh, biophony, uh, these, these sounds are already occurring and they are in the auroras. If you spent time and probably sat there and listened to the sounds of the auroras, it would probably tune you in. To the universe in a grand manner yeah. um i assume that it would be the embodiment of the living creatures on earth you know there's there's a sound that the earth is making don't we want to know it and just and understand it and well, see well exactly that language I, is? I believe the wolves respond to the uh the some of the aurora um, oh yeah they i think they control it through trophic cascades they hear it and they they tweak it they they hear something that's not quite right in it they don't know that it's not right. They just know that it's a dissonance. So they create it with, with through auto tune or auto correct with their voice. They're auto correcting the planet's sound system. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, crazy. I like it. Yeah, um, I've been talking about that for a while. So actually, since the first episode of the Geometric View, we we had that strange conversation. My whole. Uh, my my whole perspective here is coming from trophic cascades because that's what the Doherty set is. That's what Berkeley currents are. Um, everything is a cascade. It's a progressive um, geometry. The only way that you can get um, a progression and progressive growth, uh, a rhythmic progression and geometric progression, is using phi. Phi is the solution to, which is the golden mean, is the solution to, um, to projective and progressive growth. You can't have it without without it. When I when I found that out, I was just like, oh my gosh. There's there because what we were talking about here with the cosmic porch and the cosmic filaments is that is that this is the unified field. So. Why don't more scientists start studying people who have started, who have, who have uh, shown the the greater um, cosmic connections? Uh, this unified field was actually drawn a long time ago, but we can go to Ani Basant and Leadbeater. Leadbeater uh, was they were the first ones to actually that I know of sketch out a, a drawing of the system, the solar system, uh, where it's all helical. It's a corkscrew helical, like solar system that we're discovering now. Yeah. But, um, yeah, people can study us cause we exist. People can study our work. Don Scott did the Bessel function of the solar system with his numbers and how things align and line up, it's the Doherty set. It's the same thing. You can find, you can scale out, projectively scale out the Doherty set, find exactly where the earth is, find exactly where Mars is, Mercury, find out why their tilts are their tilts. You can see, you can see the planet in relation to all the other spheres um, and, and why they have a, a certain size magnetosphere and why they have, um, pinch points, Lagrangian points around it. It's all there in detail. And, uh, and 
as Don Scott said, it's, it's, a, it's an exciting detail. It's, it's, there's so much detail to it that it's, pro, it's um, predictive. The predictive power of the cosmic porch and the Doherty set. Um, these people who are drawing these images, there is truth to them. So scientists can take them and, and, and use them and, and the raw data and use them as we have been throughout all history. Because what, what it is that they're studying is, is charge. They're studying electricity. They're studying ether. They're studying putting lightning into a jar, bottling charge, how to turn charge into circuitry. Our circuits and our wires are, are mimicking the cosmic power lines with the coaxial cables. Cosmic power lines are coaxial cables. They're Birkeland currents. They're filaments. Um, but they do, they do break down into a Cayley-Dixon manifold. Um, the Cayley-Dixon manifolds are the, uh, the quaternity type of octonian Sidonian nesting system. Uh, you got two, then you got four, then you got eight, then you got um, 16, then you got 32, 48. Uh, it's a double periodic cascade, a periodic doubling cascade. Um, that's what these filaments and these ropes are made of. That's what the number system is. Number itself is nothing more. It, number itself, we're so, we're like, we as humans are like, oh my gosh, there's so much connections to number. God must be a mathematician, right? You look and all of the all of the great philosophers throughout time, they're like, they're like, God is a mathematician. God must be a mathematician. Um, God must be a geometer. You look at the Freemasons and the their God, the name of their God is the big G, um, the uh, geometer, the grand architect of the universe. So it obviously all comes down to geometry. It might sound silly and dumb in school and or to anybody at any time, but yeah, it all comes down to geometry. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with that. Uh, I mean, a number of months ago, buddy, I was talking about the Schnall effect uh, and uh, it's the it was the effect the planets have, uh, 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 the, the energy of the planets has on um, things like chemical reactions, uh, nuclear de decay rates, um, basic life force uh, principles, and they seem they seem to correlate with these uh, these cycles that Schnallin um, identi identified. Uh, now, I, I'd be very interested to see uh, if I pull this document up if these uh, he, he identified maybe ten or fifteen uh, different cycles ranging from il um, a number of a number of weeks up to hundreds of years, or even and some some of them a, a couple of million years. And uh, I wonder, I wonder if the if we found those numbers, they'd have any uh, any correlation with the numbers that pop out of the Doherty set. Um, um, uh, along those kind of lines, those ratios of distance, or maybe um, energetic distance, gravitic distance, all sorts of distance. I wonder. I wonder if the if um, we put the solar system on onto the correct scaled Doherty set. Uh, if the uh, if like you said, the planets and the, uh, the those planetary interactions might actually fall out in a more graphical way. Um, yeah yeah actually they they do um there's don scott actually he after he did his numbers and crunched his numbers for the spatial arrangement of the solar system um uh, it, it, in within a berkeley current in a field force free field line cur current um he actually found that another guy did the numbers before him of course and it was almost exact as him as the numbers um, and that those exact same, the same way they did their metric would scale identical to the Doherty set. Um, what I'm most interested in is to see the larger interactions between, um, like the Oort cloud, um, Orc 
clouds, which are new. They were just re- discovered recently and recently been published uh, within the past year. Um, orc clouds are um, multi-galactic uh, supernova rev- re- uh, remnants is what they're saying. Could be that. It could be supernova re- revenant. The, these are between the galaxies in the galactic void, aren't they? These uh, arcs. In, intergalactic. Yep. Intergalactic. Yep, it's, yeah. They're huge. They're freaking. They're the biggest thing that we found so far. Um, <clears throat> corresponding, and they're saying it could be the throat of a black hole. Um, oh no. They're okay, actually. Yeah. Well, if it is a throat of a black hole, that's great. It's a throat of a Z pinch. <laughs> cool. <laughs> so. Uh, but what how they get their name is uh ORC um um something circles or random orbiting circles or uh something along those lines but it's a sphere it's a sphere so you have these on every level you have these these uh these these edges or these boundary conditions a skirmion is it a skirmion a soliton uh is that is that what this structure is do you think uh which which one uh no when when you say when you're saying this these arcs uh you know um rather rather than a black hole could it be more of a um a soliton or a skirmion um uh, um i was just looking into it i'm actually putting together a presentation about it um there's so much that they don't know about it yet it's they're so new um i know a lot more about the Ort cloud and the hall cloud and those are going to be that's going to be a fantastic presentation um because there's just overwhelming more overwhelming evidence of uh of these outer layers in the doherty set making up these outer layers in the solar system because don scott showed uh along with um david johnson and uh jim weninger um and us, all of us together, we we showed that uh, that the solar system is a Birkeland current, um, and that's what we often show here on this show. When I look up Don Scott Argos Vu, that was David Johnson working on that, an old buddy of ours. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, the the whole solar system is a Birkeland current, but what I just found out is that. The Oort cloud is halfway to uh, what's the closest galaxy to us? Andromeda. Androm- yeah, Andromeda. Um, our Oort cloud, the outer edge of it, is halfway to their uh, Andromeda. So that means Andromeda has an Oort cloud that's halfway to us. You see what I'm saying? The bubbles touch. Yeah. The bubbles have larger bubbles. So it's actually it creates like this equidistance, even though there's not an equidistance between there's there's a, a equanimity between because a of the outer layers. Yeah, a separation, right? A border. Yeah. Um. But yeah, dude, this here. Um, so the arc another. led was was meant to be. Uh, that's where the comets were meant to be firing in from at one point, uh, and also. Uh, it's meant to be a, a sort of very rocky, very dusty area that surrounds the uh, the sol- uh, what the heliopause, uh, and uh, uh, it's it's matter is very very highly charged, neg- negatively charged, uh, and I think uh, those two Voyager ships just went through it, and uh, they they got to they got to see the charge anyway. Um, yeah, so yeah. yeah, there's good stuff coming about about the arc cloud. Have you got any more than that, uh, buddy? Um, that's all I got for right now. Did you say? Have I got any more? What? Oh no, no, just uh, just yeah, just if you had any more uh, info on, on the arc cloud, uh, yeah. This, I yeah, yeah. I, do, I I am going to do a whole presentation, so I'm going to save a lot of it for that. Um, oh, okay, okay. But if you look here, this image is great. Um. I love that particular image. You know, I'm just going to go to. I'm just going to go to the Oort cloud itself. 
a picture of it. Because that picture will come up. This one. That's what made me see the Doherty set. This picture. You can clearly see that there's a, a scale and a cascade here. And and you're, you're showing, you know, it's showing zoomed in areas of a larger system, oh, a yeah. smaller system. Yeah. But this this picture, when I was listening to Orc Cloud, I was like, oh, my gosh, this thing exists. I'm like, how come I didn't predict this? Like, of course, I should have seen this before. But now that I'm starting to see all this other stuff, uh, um, uh, astronomy and see how it all goes together, um, I, I should be able to predict a lot more things. Um, I'm blindsided because there's so many things that the Doherty set involves and has to do with that sometimes I don't see all the other things and there's so many more, right? So, I mean, it, it should be infinite. It should have, it should be dialed into an infinite amount of things because we talk about, and there exists seemingly an infinite amount of things on the planet and in the universe. So the more things that dial in and the direct and the Doherty set can describe, um, the greater. So this outer cloud, the, the Oort cloud, um, totally is is the outer boundary condition um in, inside of inside of this geometry of the doherty set let me see if i can go oh well if i go to pictures um yeah probably not the best time to go to pictures so so in a in a in a, in a model where you've got markland convection uh you you would tend to um find the heavy metals right on the outside on the on the arc load wouldn't you um yeah because they're they're asteroids uh, uh they're comets i mean and they're composed of iron and you know uh heavy metals um exogenous metals yeah you would so, expect them to be really heavy metals yeah yeah that's crazy i never even thought about that but yeah the outside layer is heavy and uh and it's hot you yeah. think it'd be cold but there's a boundary condition where it's hot yeah i believe so. that's what the voyagers found out yeah yep and then it flips the magnetic pole too when it went through when voyager went through um the the inside of the orc cloud because it ain't getting that it ain't getting to the outside <laughs> it's just too big yeah yeah uh Apparently, su supposedly, it got to the inside of the Oort cloud, which I still don't believe. But whatever. Well, I think I think I've heard it's still uh, transmitting. Oh shit! <laughs> God, I just started a fire. <laughs> uh, all, right, all right, it's fine. Yeah, yeah apparently it's this, they're both still transmitting anyway. So uh, I, I just think it's so so little data, so uh, amount volumes of data coming through that it's. Uh, they need a lot of it before they can uh, get any information out of it. You know what? You know what annoys me a lot is is the people that trash talk science and then use scientific articles to explain what they're talking about. <laughs> you know, like people who just tr do nothing but trash talk mainstream science and then they take mainstream articles and and do talks about them. The the. The, the thing here that's happening is that we're all coming to new knowledge, new information together. So if you just say, I hate this person or this person's wrong because of that or this reason, you get our you get your biases and it just puts you in a tiny little box. You know, like people need to be able to critique their uh, the, the science and the scientists Um but to just go out and start bad mouthing all all of it as as a whole, you know, I've seen done in in many of our groups and from many of us, and then we go back and we 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 use their data. We'll we'll use NASA's data, but we'll talk a bunch of trash about NASA, you know, like and how. Well, I mean, shit. There's a lot of stuff to talk about. A lot of a lot of trash to talk about NASA. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. I, I don't feel bad about talking trash at all, but um, I will say that it is important to keep a 
plastic mind to keep it yeah. loose, flexible, to be capable of considering new, new thoughts, um, to not become hung up on a particular pet theory. For example, and it's just, you know, me bragging a little bit, but I was pretty sure that the moon uh, had caused the megafauna extinction. It was the right, it was, it was big enough for an arc discharge. It was close enough. There was obviously an attraction. There are signs of, of, uh, you know, removal of, uh, of excavation of material on one side of the Jovian body. We have, uh, you know, the Enuma Elish. I felt pretty confident in that theory. And then I kept following the data and I got into the studying the cosmic egg uh, things around the world and realized that even the Thunderbolts project had, they had underestimated this, the story, right? And that all of us had underestimated the, the real story um, and that the Chinese had told it to us very point blank. And we all kind of looked at it as a form of numerology and it was, it is numerology and it is the Fibonacci, but they were also being point blank about what happened. And, uh, you know, the, the, uh, it's what's interesting too, is that, that, uh, Fibonacci and the alchemy of that uh, shows up in the book of Thomas even. But when I realized that it was a, a much better, uh, vector, you know, the star splitting apart and all that, and then it fit the Sapphire, uh, experimental data and it fit Peratt's data and it eliminated a need for a micronova and it, and it fixed the comet theory and, just all those things. And, you know, it was, it was humbling because if I had been stuck to my pet theory about the moon being the main vector, um, I would have been very limited. And it was only after I did that, that all the MIMS work was able to start coming through. And that's, there's something about that. I mean, the, the consciousness uh, is, is, a, is just a, a part of the, the same big G flow as, as the, the force, the ether, the numbers, the physics, and ultimately God. Um, and the the humility of, of, of knowing that uh, was very important. That being said, uh, you know, this new paper that I'm doing, this, this POS theory, uh, I'm pretty hard on Carl Sagan, probably harder than I've ever been on anyone. Uh, I, I, by comparison, I've, I've been rather nice to Shermer and to uh, Ben Davidson. Uh, and to the mainstream. Um, and the reason is because I, I feel like he was in a position and he espoused these beliefs that you, you know, you, you should stick to the science and there should be room. But then, but then he totally ruined Velikovsky's life. Now, so I am personally not built to, uh, to go back and make excuses for bad behavior. I just not, I, I don't, I don't, I don't believe in doing that. Um, and so in this paper, I am absolutely laying it out. Now, it's, it's also a general discussion. And one of the most important parts of the discussion is the discussion of boundaries. Plasma demonstrates boundary conditions. And we have to have a sense of right and wrong. There is a rainbow of gray. And moral relativity does exist. However, there are absolutes. And empiricism works for a reason, because ultimately truth comes from outside. We observe and um, attach meaning and we interpret it from our inside, from our subjective place, because as above, so below. However, so long, so far, the, the alt stream has spent so much energy not using empiricism. And it's something that we really need to correct. It has been a, a problem for many decades that the alt stream is on. And the alt stream didn't used to be that way. Uh, the Filson historic. Good, good luck bringing empiricism back. We can't even critically think anymore. <laughs> well, and, and that, 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 is, that is true. It's, it's going to be difficult because even the mainstream people are abandoning it. Um, I don't know if people remember the, the European Space Agency, but prior to going to what was it, Common Build 4, I can't remember which which comment it was, but they produced an entire movie, basically a short film with paid actors, real actors, famous actors about, you know, and they were displaying all these magical powers and 
we were going to go and find water. And because we found water, it changed everything. It, it's the most ridiculous film I think I've ever seen, but it was very well made. And then, of course, we went and we didn't find water, right? We found rocks. Um, and, and this kind of um, touchy-feely approach to science is a serious, serious problem. Um, how to how to fix that? It, it does appear to be the, the wider issue of the POS theory, which is greater men create and discover things, and then lesser ones come along and screw it up, use it up, and ruin it. And I don't know how to change that because that's nature. That's yeah. That I mean, I mean, at the moment, at the moment, it seems like a lot of the projects that are being encouraged uh, are uh, encouraged are those which. Uh, are identifying uh, cosmic risks. Uh, for example, asteroids that they haven't seen before uh, and uh, figuring out when it's going to smash into the Earth and, and, tracking, and tracking these particular little bits of uh, uh, insignificant little bits of junk millions of miles away when we, when we should be looking at the real data that's, uh, that we still need to analyze and and, I, and I'm guilty of this because uh, uh, I, I still want to track these the nearest 3,000 stars, and I haven't started it yet. Um, it's like uh, it's like old old buddy James's stuff. Uh, old buddy stuff can you know we we need to be able to uh, assimilate all these sort of objects using using the Doherty set and uh, and find out you know get these predictive things going. Uh, integrate the, the 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 data from the Schnall effects and other reports that we've got that that uh that say that these uh these cosmic influences uh we, we can start to track them now um including including reaction times and uh and nuclear breakdown and probably there'll, all, there'll be all sorts of different so you know like probably light will be speeding up and slowing down under this under the right conditions uh who knows and uh but uh but really getting it through uh you know this this gateway again and uh I know there's, I know there's stuff. Uh, I mean, your stuff, buddy, for your uh, your ticketing stuff. All that needs doing, yeah, doesn't it? It's uh, that bit of HTML and all that lot. Uh, there's lots of computer work to do. Yeah, uh, uh, there's there is a lot to do. Um, I mean, right now I have about 20 people coming, uh, so. I, to make it easier on me, I could go ahead and, um, but the thing is, I haven't really figured out pricing and things like that. Um, you know, I, I assume the presenters are going to come for free because you're presenting. I don't want to charge someone who's presenting. It's yeah, so I, don't, I don't pay for it. If I'm presenting, I don't pay. <laughs> right. And then, and then on top of that, um, uh, I, I need to figure out how much to pay the performers. So pretty much it seems like performers are $50. Uh, vendors are $50. So the vendors that I pull in are going to give me $50. Then I'm going to take that $50 and give it right to the performers. So the vendors, I don't make money on any of the vendors or the performers. They actually cancel each other out. Well, that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. So, that that takes care of that cost um and then as far as starting to charge people everybody's like i have people asking me like well is there a vendor form is there like a you know somewhere where i can sign up you know and, and get a ticket or like you know and i'm like as far as i'm thinking in my head the easiest way for me to do this i'm only i'm only associated with paypal so um, but I need to open up my my options because I'm I'm a vendor and I sell things. I'm a merchant, so I need to open up a few different avenues of money for me, like Cash App, um, a couple of different. Right. Yeah. So, but the thing is, is I think I'm just going to keep it all um, 
all as simple as possible for me, not involving anybody else out or or starting some sort of a payment system online. Yeah. Would yeah. be uh <clears throat> just send the money directly to me at golden scaling uh at gmail.com through PayPal, period. Yeah, I think I think that's probably the best uh, the best bet as well at the moment, to be honest. Uh because yeah. I, I just I mean, my life's a bit up in the air at the moment, so I just don't know what I'm going to be doing from one month to the next, this next six month anyway, so. Uh, yeah, so it's it's going to be, uh, it's not going to be too hard because the maximum is like 500 and a, a lot of it might be door traffic. So as long as I start getting people in um, and start getting payment, but my issue is here is um, so far nobody's paying because all I have, the majority of people that I have is vendors, yeah. um, vendors, performers, and speakers. So none of those people are paying. Um, and I'm not collecting money from vendors until the day of. Um, and I'm not paying the performers until the day of. So basically there's no exchange of money right now. Um, and the only money that people would buy is a ticket. Like this guy from France, he wants to come, he's asking about tickets. So how to get in, you know, and I'm just going to have to, uh, one by one, whoever pays, I'm just going to write the name in my book, um, of people that are coming. I have a whole book already of people that are coming and presenters and performers and everything else. So I'll just keep it all cataloged inside that book. Yeah, I think um, that's a great idea. Yeah, payment by payment, whatever. It's not too hard. Then there'll be a whole guest list of people that already bought their tickets, and you can check it on the guest list and be like, oh, already paid. You're in. Here's your stamp. Boom. <clears throat> right, yeah, great, great. Uh, Ramon, though, uh, I'm, I'm interested in starting to design this uh, um, uh, this da the database uh, for the gateway. Um which uh, we can we can put online and then start uh, incrementally adding facilities to it um, and uh, and applications. But this 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 first way of uh, starting to collect information, um, I think uh, I think I'm ready to to start having a go at writing it right uh, pretty soon, uh, like this week. Uh, and uh, do you know anything about relational databases, Ramon? No, none 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 at all. Um, okay. I, I, I wish, um, huge part of me would, would love to know something about that, but I, I honestly am when I, when I, uh, severed myself from computer engineering, I did a really thorough job of it overall. Yeah, fair enough. That's no problem, Ramon. Uh, it's, it's just, um, uh, it's just basically what we've got to do is, uh, get lists of stuff, lists, lists of information that we can, uh, um, we can compare mathematically and statistically, um, yeah. um, and uh, and be able to uh, link up queries to the, to the correct, uh, um, you know, uh, link up the data items, the information to the correct query, uh, and be able to uh, get to a point where we can build very sophisticated queries, and uh, back will come not just lists of things, but maybe a uh, maybe a reading list uh, or maybe it'll compile the whole the whole thing for you including images text uh, maybe maybe some spoken stuff you know and uh, a real good gateway an information gateway with the, with terms that are defined inside it you know um so right. that so that we start we start speaking in a language that everyone is understanding the terms um, I, I I think by summer I can work myself into that kind of project right now with business and just life and some personal things. I'm a little overwhelmed to, to start it right now. Yeah. Uh, however, you know, uh, never say never, I guess. Um, we might be able to find somebody that is like perfect for that because I. Well, no, I mean, I, at, the I, end, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, uh, you you will you will be you, you think you don't know anything about relational databases, but it'd be surprising how much uh, how much um, help you would be able to uh, 
uh, to provide, you know, if, if prompted with, you know, which I can do a lot of. All I'm saying is, uh, uh, I'm, I want to, I want to work uh, sort of uh, with, with a bigger structure in mind for later on, and uh, you know, I'm. I, I want to um, to pick your brains on some on on some things as I as I carry on. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do all this in Django, which is a, a structured uh, a structured kind of system of uh, writing a website, and uh, and of course then uh, <laughs> certain users will be able to have privy to certain data, and certain users will be able to have privy to facilities. Um, for example. Uh, I'm going to try and I'm 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 going to put this um, uh, astronomy dashboard um, on onto it so we can start tracking these planets. And if people have an and if members have an interest in a specific uh, uh, cosmic cosmic body, uh, we can set up an alert and and get the data whenever a satellite gets a measurement of it, uh, and and then add that to the tractor. Uh, to the track bodies. I mean, I wanted to do this, uh, and because uh, Jim Wenninger, uh, I'm sure it would help his line of work at the moment. And I'm still very interested in these, uh, in the shape of these hop hop vibra vibrations, and uh, and the skirmions. Um and um, so those those are two those are those are uh, make me interest as far as the electric universe goes, and I, and I would I'd love to uh, to fit buddy's buddy's uh, geometries into these if we can um and then uh and then from my thing i've got all this atlantic theory um which is really opening up the origins of the sea peoples etc uh, and i want to i want i could i could talk for hours and hours on that if i collect some some good uh, pictures and um bits of sounds and you know things that appeal to me um so, so uh i want um i want to set up a, a music laboratory um as well and these are all dashboard applications that uh i can set up through uh which will be able to we hopefully will be able to access through your site um we've got we've got the we've got options for uh from an it uh, perspective as well um setting up setting up the um um the uh peer-to-peer -peer, um uh, networks so that so that we can uh, parallel process uh if if we are starting to uh, crunch a lot of data that uh, we can share our computer resources uh, as a group and effectively we can each have access to a supercomputer if we need one uh, and and I can set that up in Python, um, uh, but these these are all jobs. Uh, these are all jobs. Uh, of course, of course, I've got to find a real job as well in the next couple of months. So, uh, but I mean, the, these are these are. I'll be working in that line of line of business anywhere. If I'm if I'm working, it'll be it'll be writing uh, artificial intelligence applications. So uh, so anyway, I think now you know it'd be a good time to. Uh, if you've got any uh, anything you'd like to add to a wish list, Ramon, especially with the gateway, and I suppose I suppose um, you know just uh, just any kind of input, I'd really appreciate it, and I'll keep you I'll keep you abreast of uh, my programming as I do it because I'll be setting all the whole thing up on my laptop. And, well, I mean, uh, I'll uh, be able to I, just. I need to know what kind of database is it is it going to be star and uh, star motion is that that the primary uh type of database we're talking about here or well no what what i'm what i'm trying to do is get all these records but not necessarily store them all but have it have information to large amounts of them and be able to pull those up onto your screen when you want to query that information uh um and you and uh, so you you can you can make various selections of say stars that you want to track, um, right. and uh, and then and then put the put the data from those tracked stars. Uh, use that use the data in a neural network, which then doesn't have to save the data. It just makes an impression of a. Uh, it it just creates. Um, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, neural weights. Uh, so all the stars 
um, will provide into um, uh, just one number. All the data will go into one number, which is the weight of... There was um, thought of a couple of weeks ago, and I'll have to try and remember what it was. It, it, it had to do with, I was thinking about Hannes Salvin's uh, theory, and then I was thinking about the cosmos without gravitation, and there was something I specifically wanted to, to see, but I can't remember now what it is. I know that there is one thing that, that NASA is claiming they, you know, in an email, oh, it doesn't exist, but I know it exists because um, for years and years they talked about that the Jupiter and Saturn put out more heat than they um, absorb. Everybody knows that. But also I had heard that the temperature is slowly decreasing, which means you can trace it back to a point in which there would have been a, a, a high heat. And I know they've done this, but they're hiding it from the public. And I'd like to find that data, that database that actually shows uh, how much, you know, uh, that it's decreasing at an exponential level or is it is it slowing down? You know, if, if each, you know, year or decade that passes, the amount of heat that it, that is being released is, is decreasing, then that implies something very strong. Uh, so any database related to the temperatures of Jupiter and Saturn are going to be absolutely key for my for my research. I'll be right back. I got a needle a patient. I'll be right back. Okay. Okay. Go on. Keep going. Yeah. Um, so if I could if I could throw in a random uh, twist here to this, I was going to ask Ramon actually. Or one of you guys anyway, whoever, because actually while he was talking, it made me have this really strange thought. Um, and this is the thought. Does an email have feelings or a life? Does, does, does an email have atoms? Is there atoms involved in emailing? The answer is yes, right? There's atoms involved, right? In sending an email from one person to another. Yeah, we oh, we use it. We use energy, electricity, don't we? Uh, yeah, it's so, just obviously so, a digital signal. Or whether there's life in it, um, um, is another. Uh, I mean, it's information right. about life. Right, right, right. Well, that's that's two kind of different sentences or uh, questions. But I guess one question would be: Does an email have atoms? Are atoms involved? Is weight involved? Is there's an energy transfer? Okay, right. All these things, right? Now, what I'm getting at is a question that was proposed by, I think his name was Rory, and I can't find his site, and I don't know. I I I, I have no idea who he is, but I used to listen to it, and all of a sudden he went blank. He he asked and interviews some of the best questions about um, near-death experiences, all the kind of stuff, Rupert, some of the stuff Rupert Sheldrake gets into. But <clears throat> he says, uh, his question is, are dreams composed of atoms? You know, is there atoms um, in your consciousness? Is, are, is it an atomic construct? Or is it just no, electrons I don't think so. and energy? I don't think so at all. Uh, I think, uh, you know, I think there's uh, there's an interface between that material and then what we call the spiritual or ethereal. And I think, uh, and I think if there is any kind of energetic exchange, it probably is ethereal. It happens through the ether um, because but exchanges it, through the ether are also exchanging atomic information and atomic structure. Like every time that there's a phase transition from energy into um, from, let's say, any type of energy into plasma and it's any three of its modes, like, for example, sprites, electricity that goes up into the sky, um, into the space. Um, that's a tr that's a TLE, transluminous event. Now, who's to say that that's not the materia uh, the actual material of a soul leaving someone's body um, and they all collectively leave the bodies and come together and, and leave the atmosphere as sprites 
Now, it's easy to understand this and think about this. We actually did a whole episode on this. Um, geometry of, I think, TLE's consciousness, something like that. But what if I were to die right now and there's a storm happening somewhere else? Um, I'm, I'm sure I'm almost positive that TLEs happen, whether there's a storm or not, all over the earth during the day and the night. Um, but I might be wrong. Um, but I, I think there's probably just like thunderstorms happen during the day and night. TLEs probably happen during the day and night, but we only photograph them at night because we can see them then. Yeah. So, so if I were to die right now and my spirit were to go into the global electric circuit and leave my circuit or part of my spirit or whatever happens and, and I were to be going and I were to be chosen or elected or, um, predestination or or i chose myself during my waking life to go in the direction towards heaven um or my actions or whatever and actually the direction towards heaven is um is a sprite so you condense you go up into the atmosphere and that tunneling of that white light that you see is probably you actually floating through the atmosphere because when you leave your body sure there's been a lot of uh, out of body experiences, OBEs, right? Um, but uh, then you can leave your body and then you can go further out. And a lot of people that's astral projecting, you know, astral projection, um, which makes perfect sense with the Doherty set and projective geometry and all of that and progressive growth uh, and the key to progressive growth, which is the golden mean, as Dan or Dan Winter discovered and pointed out. Um, it's all multiples of golden mean, golden mean, multiples of golden mean. Um, but we travel through this circuit, through this tunnel, and this this could be the access to heaven. Then you go into heaven via that way. Um, and and you go uh, as as a, a light. You leave as well, a light. I think you I, leave, I, I hang feel on, like, one I like second. the light. But, you uh, leave I as like a light, light just idea, like you but, come. But. Uh, just I like think, you come uh, as a light you come into the world as a light the, yes. uh, when the sperm goes into the egg the zinc the more zinc inside of that transmute trans uh interaction uh the brighter the flash is and it's all because of zinc which is um which is um, a metal you know okay and, yeah, yeah. and you die and you I'm turn back. into a flash it makes the most sense did you hear yeah, well, the, what we were well, talking about? Well, rather, rather than a heaven thing, yeah, I think, I I think like you do that, join that, in with the consciousness. Uh, I think you do join in with it, with that general consciousness, and totally. then and then that's 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 spread out again right through all, everything that can contain life. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, so, it, it, I, it makes the most sense, left, dude. Hold on, I want to catch back up with you. But when I left, Buddy had said something about there was. There was something he wanted to pick my brain about or, or something along those lines and we were we had been talking about the, the database project so i'd like to um see what that was about well yeah. here let me let me uh, rewind you real quick sure. this is the question when you were talking about emails i had this random thought about are emails composed of atoms is there atomic interactions and exchange there are you know, do emails have feelings or life is a different question, but they're e emails. They you're transfer. Talking the, what, you're talking about what I was uh, in my paper, the Dether paper, right? Data Ether. Um, OK. And I would say that if if it's there, which is what's in the in the paper, if the Data Ether exists, the Dether, then uh, we probably could model it as a gaseous plasma um, that obeys some kind of, of thermodynamical law. You know um, that. You know the but name for only proof I have so far all has to do. I, I was using uh, Bitcoin markets and stocks and uh, uh, Fibonacci pressure waves, looking for data ley lines. So yeah. that's a that's a pretty neat series of papers that you actually would like. Um, there, there, there's like delicious. A, there's a whole there's a whole series. first it starts with the data ether paper and the financial velocity uh, addendum, which came out of one of the hypotheses out of the MEMS two paper. And then from there, there was a series of Bitcoin future. They're very short, but they have the uh, they they have the the actual graphs. 
So I think that there's a strong hint. It, it, it could be possible to model that with these relational databases and, and come up with something, but I don't think it'll be the ver very first project that is done. So this is my this is my next question, which actually led led uh, led us on to a wonderful conversation that uh, that predicting what happens after death. Um, so so this is this is the next question. So we we both believe that there's atomic exchange um, uh, in emails. I mean, because there's heat and there's information data, ether. There's 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 obviously heat transformation. There's molecular. There's atomic interaction. So <clears throat> are dreams made of are dreams composed of atoms? Is the next question. Is the dream I mean, world composed of I atoms? So, you know, the L power contains the consciousness and the L power at the top um, modulates the uh, numbers. So because fire controls metal. Um, and, and then it is controlled by the ether because water controls fire. So the, the uh, interesting thing about all of this is that I was just downstairs while you all were having that conversation. Um, I was, no, this is actually just before it was with the previous patient talking about emails that I'd had that had been, uh, selected by the AI for no apparent reason between myself and say ex business partner, or ex wife, or a lawyer deleted on their own that I had not seen them. And here's another thing. Uh, one time with my business partner, uh, Jenny, uh, out of Elizabethtown, uh, I had composed an email to her that uh, I didn't send. Then I went to all the way to Elizabethtown, and then she answered the email in person. And then I said, I haven't sent you that email yet. And then she opened up her email address, and it didn't exist, like it hadn't arrived. And she said, I swear I read that this morning. And I said, well, I typed it this morning. And, you know, and so we had it all times, but it would right. be impossible to find now because right. I later on did send it to her. Uh, yeah. So there, the, the, these kind of quantum uh, tunneling events do appear to be both A, related to consciousness and B, mediated through the ether. And then, of course, there's data that can track it. So therefore, your power are numbers. So all all powers within the big G network. Um, and I find it fascinating now getting proof, uh, data proof of that is seems to be harder to pinpoint than getting pictures and videos of ghosts, to be honest with you. Yeah, that's right. We've got to find a way of, uh, of actual getting data. Um, this, they see this data on the ether. We've got to find a way of uh, being able so to measure I it almost. Right, we do, uh, but but this still doesn't answer the question. Are dreams composed of atoms? Well, I wouldn't use the word atom, but I would well, that's say the question. I wouldn't you have to use so the word atom. I'll say no, I wouldn't say so myself because I, would, I, would uh, say I don't no. think the consciousness is is contained totally in the mind. I don't think okay, it's a complete so it, material. Ether, let's define ether. Ether, ether, which is um, from what I'm understanding what we're calling plasma and plasma is ionized gases and are ionized well, not atoms, only, right? Not only uh, ionized gases. And, and there's I think so many more things that plasma is. That. So is plasma atomic? Yeah. Uh, plasma, no, plasma no. flows. Not always. Not always. Not always. Right. It's baryonic as well. Uh, and it's uh, ionic as well. Um, so, the, you know, plasma, at nest, nearest I can determine plasma, we need to get away from the idea of plasma being a, uh, a substance angel. and more talk about its behavior. The, the yeah. behavior of plasma is much more, more important than the, than the, uh, what it's made of because there's, there's condensed matter forms, there's crystal forms, there's ultra hot and ultra cold. Um, there's and gas. And you, That's and right. And the etheric is the more spiritual. It's a more, it's a, it's a less yeah, material. It's, it's, it's tiny than heaven. You yeah, can but easily they, anthropomorphize those, uh, any one of those. Um, and that's perfect. when you get angels and demons and, uh, and spirits. 
Yeah, probably because uh, when we've caught and it's in it's in one of the papers now. Um, I think it's the meditation is in the white and black space. It's a MIMS paper. I have the animated GIF showing the the ghost on location uh, that it, it is clearly a, a spheroid. It's some form of ball lightning and it moves in a vortex. It moves around a, a, a central uh, a central line and mm -hmm. spirals up. And so uh, most assuredly, whatever those consciousnesses, consciousness, consciousnesses are, they uh, are going to have some kind of locus uh, a, in a in a plasma form um it, classically the chinese said that that demons and ghosts and things like that were afraid of metals which makes you think that they didn't want to be grounded they didn't want to be uh contained into the crystal and they also had a tradition of storing them if they could into ceramic jars and then they would bury the jars and they would also of course put a, a food talisman a magic talisman on the jar in order to to seal the jar Ghostbusters. Uh, -na -na, -na 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 -na. Yeah, I mean, it was the job of the, the. It was the job of a guy like me in the old village when they would hang a serial killer. Uh, he would go up once he was hung. He would bring a jar and hold it under the anus of the deceased and capture the po uh, consciousness, so it couldn't become a gway and haunt the village, and, uh, looking for revenge. And then he would seal it up with a magic. Taoist talisman, and then they would bury that. And the uh, the Taoist thunder magicians, when they become um, practitioners of thunder magic, and in thunder magic works. I've, I've, I've oh played. yeah. Uh, what they do is they go out into a thunderstorm. They attracts they attract the lightning uh, charge. They don't get shocked, but they attract the charge to their head. And there's definitely. I had a patient who had too much spirit chi, and he had been struck on the golf course seven times by lightning. So it is it is a thing. And I personally um, resurrected a moth at a Buddhist uh, chant. Mm -hmm. I had I had been chanting the sutra. And uh, and one of the light bulbs uh, in a in a, row, in a row of light bulbs, only one light bulb went out, even though they were all in one circuit. And uh, and then I looked down and there was a moth that had basically been attracted to it, the candles and all that and, and it had fallen over. I picked it up and I was chanting. I stared into its into its corpse form and it started flapping around. And so I took it outside and let it out there so that it could die in, a, in an organic environment. Um, so there's something really interesting about consciousness, ether, and electricity, all the force all tied together. So uh, let's can we call let's call that uh, the global electric circuit, okay? Sure, go ahead. If, uh, and it, uh, for example, let's just let's just imagine that um, that all of these are part and parcel of the global electric circuit. Um, ball lightning, which are skirmions, um, theorized to be skirmions, uh, which are very intricate, beautifully woven uh, vortices or, or um, toroidal base. I call them toroid nodal, toroid nodal. Um, bases, uh, just like the hall cloud around the the our solar system. Um, anyway, so this this global electric circuit has to always maintain. It has to live, so that therefore sacrifices are involved, whether we like it or not. Okay, so. People lose their shit a lot. They just completely lose it, and they go, they, they, they tap out for a minute, and then they come back. And oftentimes, weird stuff happens when they when they black out. Um, yeah. Now, it, uh, uh, think of think of the global electric circuit as a living thing. Um, right. Now, that means things got to die. <laughs> that means sometimes things got to die now. That, that means like people I'm talking about a lot of our mental um, issues are tied directly into the global electric circuit, which which, you know, is obviously they talk about um, uh, Ben Davidson talks about how closely we're related to the to the sun and the sunspots and our health. But I'm talking about everything connected and we call it one thing and that is the global electric circuit 
and that's just one. And the global electric circuit is tied into the solar electric circuit. That's two, level two. And each one of the circuits uh, is is a, a larger circuit that's maintaining equilibrium. Correct. Now, the only thing that I understand this to be, now there's the fine structure constant, which is the reason why we have life instead of no life, the fine structure constant. Um, and the astronomically ridiculously um, strange proportion uh, that we that we do have life, uh, that's the the fine structure constant. Okay, so we have that. Now, uh, you if you look at the whole thing as a living system, unfortunately, uh, there's there's good things that happen that people do. And they're felt like God led them to God. What's God? Global electric circuit. G E C, not G O D. Global electric circuit. Okay. Now I, I use planetary because the the galactic is already a G. You know, but it, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It, the point is so, the G keeps the G the, the G keeps repeating. It's I, I think what you're talking about the spiral the spiral. Yeah. Room. Yeah, yeah. Well, sometimes we'll say God told us and it's like an earthly kind of urge to move in a certain direction. Right. And then sometimes we'll say God felt us to move in this direction. And it was totally from the Holy Spirit, which is obviously from the big G. Um, So, I mean, there's there's little there's a synaptic resonance is what we're experiencing. It's a synaptic um, like, okay, here's this big electric current saying one thing. We're receiving it. Um, you know, we're, we're transceivers, we're receivers and transmitters. Um, there's a guy who has a theory, I forget the guy's name, but whatever, a lot of people have had this now, um, that we're receiving these messages. Um, we don't have thoughts, thoughts have us. Uh, now the Doherty right. set was from a dream. It came out of a dream. Literally it came out of a dream and then I woke up and I I was told by the universe to go get graph paper, even though I've never bought it in my life, a huge pad, a big pad of graph paper. And I started drawing and I bought yeah. uh, and I just kept going for seven days and then it stopped. Let me no bolster. more drawings, no more drawings for two years. Let me and, bolster uh, your thing. Uh, uh, so you, you've mentioned this before about the circuit and, uh, uh, the the idea that you know and Aaron has the same basic idea that that uh, humanity is doing electricity wrong. Several years ago, this is during the Electric View days. I had been driving, and I did share this on the show. I just don't remember if you were on that show or not. But can I just um, say real quick? Some people think that God, or some people think that electricity is is Satan and bad, and what is going to lead to our demise. A lot of religions believe that. Yeah, but so, those yeah. that because of the that's because of the catastrophic myths, and they don't understand what they've inherited. Yeah. You know? Right, so, right, right. So uh, before I begin the the topic that I've shared this screen, but because I've got to help a patient and I'll come back, um, I'll just share this this story and then let you guys riff for a while on it. Um, so as you remember, the knobs down here in Kentucky are Lichtenberg shape. Uh, they they have an elevation of about nine hundred feet, and um, on one of my drives. I had been passing one of the heads of the dragon, as the Chinese call it, and uh, it's a particularly fun highway, especially in the fall, to drive on because it's next to the it, it it borders the knob region and the bluegrass region. And as you know, nature loves a border. That's where you'll find you know lots of energy and species. And uh, we we rounded a particular bend, and there was uh, like a break, a, a kind of a more craggy section of the knobs. Um, they're not really cliffs, but there but there are these bluffs up at the top. And when I did, I got high. Uh, and there was this weird thought that came to my brain that humanity was doing. This was probably like four years ago that humanity was doing electricity wrong because we were we were pushing the ether to do it instead of the way nature does it. It pulls and it, draw, it draw, just comes into its own. And uh, that sudden high lasted, it lasted for about 30 seconds. It wasn't a deja vu, but it would be in that strange category of, you know, deja vu, like what's happening here. Uh, I didn't get get dizzy, uh, but it was clear that the knobs, now this is bolstered by the fact that when the AKJ went out to the Culverton um, 
platform, which is that cosmic egg stone platform. Um, when we pay, we had the uh, professional licensed, uh, like FAA licensed drone operator fly his drone from the knob over to the uh, the other knob to look for more places. He got it got EMP'd at a 400 foot elevation and uh and he nearly lost the drone like we would have lost all the footage and everything it limped back basically just on kind of luck uh and so the video actually stops at the moment that that it was emp'd and that that emp all these all these knobs are are uh at that point they're not lichtenbergs anymore they're now sputtering like anode lifts uh, and they all surround the the knob, the knob surround the giant dome that Lexington sits on. Of course, um, as I said before, there's something strange here about all that. And uh, it must continue in a giant wide arc because of the site that I have on screen. So uh, when I come back, um, I'm going to show you guys what I found this morning, just as I told Nick that I was going to do some research today and and maybe we would find something. I'm going to show you guys what 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 has come up while we were talking. So um, maybe uh, go go into some more in the consciousness. I'll be right back, guys. OK. All right, so. Um, tapping into the global electric circuit. And becoming a vessel uh, for creative change uh, for universal reasons. Now, each one of the circuits of our imagination uh, are earworms for the future. Uh, everything of our imaginations uh, adds, everything that we think of adds to the color of the whole inside of the grand, the grand picture of humans. Um, human collective consciousness, which human collective consciousness could be called morphic resonance um, or the the morphogenetic code of of humans. We have these thoughts and and we write them down and we we categorize them and they're all tied into the solar electric circuit. We think we're having them, but the greatest things often come from dreams. And that's kind of where I left off a minute ago is the Doherty set came from a dream and then I drew it, but I literally felt the hand of God on me and it was my salvation experience at the same time. I was saved. I mean, I wasn't saved before. I knew that I was going to heaven and I knew my, my one of my purposes in life, you know, like, and I, and I knew Jesus Christ, you know, we went to church and all the way, and I was raised Lutheran and, um, uh, went church to church the uh, whole time, you know, confirmed everything. And then we all just were like, okay, whatever. And we all just left church after that. Then this geometry came to me and it, and it brought us all back to church. The whole family started going to church again. Um, cause I, kept telling them and showing them look how important this is and how it's you know you know it, ha it's a, it has to do with God whatever <laughs> people feeling like they need to go out and evangelize and save people's lives that's the circuit people that feel like they need to hide their ideas in secret societies that's the circuit everything is the circuit the global electric circuit it is a combination of everything on earth. So if you could imagine a, a being the global electric circuit on earth, the grand coordinator, God, I guess, if you will, but it's just a, on a global thing, not a universal thing, as far as picture that we're looking at right now. Um, you, you, it would be in the way that we understand sonobiology and the sounds of the auroras and sonotropism, sound pulling up the first beginnings, the first creatures were actually created out of sound. So, son, sonar, blah, blah, blah. Sono seeds, sound seeds, seed sounds 
uh, are, are they come out of the auroras inside of the helicon tubes and helicon physics and w Whistler tubes. Uh, these are different names for frequencies that are out in the um, Van Allen belts. But these are these are teeming with life. Anyway, if you were to look at all of it, this is what my point is. Um, it involves sacrifice. So what I'm saying is it's not an excuse for evil behavior by far at all. But we know that we're, we call ourselves fallen or cursed or broken or um, sinful creatures. We're all sinners. That's what, you know, we have all kind of come to understand that there's something broken here. There's like a curse or something going on that that resistance is uh isn't resistance one of the things ohms inside of resistance ohms i don't, I don't know my, i should know i should brush up more on some of my electrical um i know resistance is one of them yeah ohms ohms measures the resistance of a. Uh... that's what i thought okay so um so the the resistance is the ohms the ohms are uh cataclytic behavior behavior that we naturally are why it feels like there's a fate sometimes or people have tunnel vision or where they know that they're going to die a, a certain way Inertial um, behavior maybe yes yes um there's there's a there's an understanding that there's there is a fate and that is because these lines of energy can be read that's why there's psychics that's why all this other stuff um and and if and this the whole system can be understood by bits and parts but not in the full um so you practice santeria and you mess with the vortices and you mess with the spiritual world with you lighting candles and putting hexes on people and you mess with that kind of stuff, and you're asking for uh, for the universe to mess with you too. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Same with any religion. You start praying to any god, or praying to in any manner, or doing any prayer. These are all circuits, and they all behave differently. We're tapping into archangels. Arc. There's the arc plasma. The archetype here is uh, is these are plasma instabilities that exist. And I was attacked by one in person and tried and someone tried to murder me. Um, this person who tried to murder me told me that they were communicating directly with Siri. He called her Siri. Um, it was it was a demonic attack. I knew it. I recognized it for what it was. Um, and it, 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 it was involved on very high levels with um, weird things uh, with other actors, Hollywood actors. So um, these, uh, I don't want to get into it too much, but I guess I'll continue to go with the, uh, the idea that shape has power. There's a power to shape. That's why you worship symbols, shapes, everything. An, an idea in its purest form comes down to a meme, which is a symbol. Um, symbology, sy symbolic, and speaking in symbols is the highest form of communication. God speaks in symbols. God does. God speaks in all languages, <clears throat> and all of our languages are based off of the toroid, and and because our our throat is a torus, our 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 sphincters. It's a set of three sphincters, but. Uh, everything is based off of the sound of a Taurus too. All we're all you're hearing is the sounds of Tauruses right now, um, coming out of my mouth. Our lips is a sphincter. That's a Taurus. Another Taurus. I'm pushing and pulling um, uh, the ether in and out of my mouth, um, creating the sounds of the universe. The same thing happens inside of these tubes, these plasma tubes that are around the Earth. This resonance is on mimicry on all scales. It 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 uh, it is a fractal recursion of uh, hierarchical and lower 
electrical communication and the plasma always it always interfaces using plasma from one phase transition to the next to the next to the next so it's plasma morphology the sound of plasma morphology uh is the what we're experiencing as living creatures we're slowed down light we're light in its retarded state in in a slowed down manner um acting out the play of the global electric circuit if the global electric if the global electric circuit let's say like i said a minute ago and someone just snaps and goes nuts and then they come to and then like people are dead at what's what happens what what happened there that happens sometimes you know it's not excusing murder but there's there is uh and for some reason my mind keeps going to the murder aspect of this or the bad things that that people do cuz the circuit is resistance it's it's resisting it's resisting the creator it's well, resisting well if you look at it this we're, way we're if you look at this listen, way we're, uh, we're literally well, resisting god that's what we're doing we're all well, we're exactly. the whole i mean you you you're building up this anti energy it's a, and it's like a karmic thing uh for example, that guy who shot I've shot about eighteen people in uh, I think somewhere in the states. I don't know where. Last week, uh, it's a, it's a massive release of of of, of a very dark force, uh, and it and what, it has an immeasurable impact on what if, those pe- those people. But it's a if, wave of impact that carries on for a long time. Right, right, right. But what if that force needed to get out, like a, needed to pop, like as like a pimple? So it had to come out one way or another. Well, it's, it's probably Ed was in such a bad state that, that that's what it was. It was like a septic pimple, uh, and that was the expression of it, that murder. And uh, and and the the karmic reaction, which will come back over the next uh, number of years. Uh, yeah, so we'll the, see. So we'll see that block out, I suppose. So the so the challenge here, or the game, becomes the game of life. To do unto others the golden rule golden mean golden ratio golden rule do unto others as you wish to be done unto you or whatever but there's there's more than that that uh your whole life you're were were trying to figure out how to deal with energy and our karma you do bad things sometimes you receive good stuff you do good stuff sometimes you receive bad things um you do good things a lot of good things and you and you, uh, and it starts to really benefit you uh you think good thoughts act good behaviors be optimistic you have more energy you affect other people better you're not um a slouch you're not um just being negative and and bringing everybody down our life our whole life is experiencing these circuits the global electric circuit if there's one we're riding it and and there's uh there's there's a million names for it that's why the hindus have a million names of a million gods you know because every circuit's different it's a station it's a frequency you tune into a thought you tune out of a thought if you resist bad thoughts you're resisting evil you resist evil and the devil flees you res- you move towards evil and evil increases around you whether you're being evil or not and you might even become a um uh, a target for evil if you start playing more with evil same with god if you move more towards the center and it's very hard to get in the kingdom of heaven you constantly moving towards the center always focused on the source on god then you're always being powered by that source if that's the circuit um and the dogs are the are the murderers and the idolaters and the people on the outside that aren't near the circuit and you can see when people start to break down getting bad and getting away from being good you can see it as a circuit you can see the circuitry breakdown in our behavior it's the global electric circuit dude we are one if we are going to start explaining this we need to start explaining it like in in very understandable terms that a kid can understand because that's what it is yeah, it's sure. a religion it's the future it is, religion it's- of the world you know it's it's what it's the truth it's just it's just 
we need to be more um, observant of it and understanding how the circuitry works. What does the circuit want? Oftentimes the circuit wants sacrifice, right? That's why we have had so many sacrifice cultures in the past. Because when you sacrifice, you often, which is getting rid of a lot of pure, beautiful iron blood that is untainted, which is tied directly into the source of all the hearts of all the suns and or the all this, <laughs> you know, iron. Um, but uh, you know, we know that we know that when we go through mourning and loss, we feel better. We know that when we cry and we cry together as as a group or a group loss, it draws us together and we come well, look, closer together look, as a culture. Yeah, look look at this. Um, look at this. The the Central the Central Americans uh, they used to suffer, sacrifice thousands and thousands of people, uh, even even as people out of uh, society uh, were selected for the for the job of being sacrificed and. Uh, you could be in any, on any layer of society and still expect at some point in your life to be to be told that it's your turn, and uh, and this and and uh, it was the worst dishonour for uh, for, a, for a person to be selected and uh, then not not want to go through with it because they right. they've in, in turn sacrificed millions of people before, and it's. Um, and it's um, it's a it's a social clearing out system, similar to having um, wolves in the forest, uh, keeping the uh, deer populations healthy and and uh, sort of more lightweight, and keeping the uh, the buffalo numbers in the correct number. You know the the predator yeah. ratio apex, and, apex and healthy yeah. populations, and yeah. and these these species. are. These routines not only served not only served to prop up their uh, social structures, but I think also uh, if you can you can imagine the the thousands upon thousands of gallons of blood that must have been uh, must have been poured out over the uh, uh, onto the land. Uh, I suppose you could grow great squashes and stuff and tomatoes with that, you know, uh, and. Uh, so, you know, so that would be a direct proof of the uh, of the uh, the person um, joining in with the global electric circuit again, really, and producing yeah. a variety of other forms yeah. of life. Yeah, this is, a, I think we're really on to something here. Um, uh, I mean. Um, just so you know, you guys know I'm back here. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. I think we're really on to something here. Um, I mean, I work directly with. Uh, high voltage electricity and I see it come together and when Ramon said that water uh, rules fire that's so true I can stop the current at any time if I just put a little bit more water on it I can starve the current by not putting enough water on it but the current will find a way through and it will build new pathways and creatures at points of least resistance that didn't exist before that's how new creatures come into existence there, uh, it's through a, it's literally like it's um, negentropy. There's entropy, right? Which right. Ramon was referring to um, the dether. When you were talking about the dether, I was like, well, uh, uh, entropy is uh, the, is information. It's just burnt information, dead information. It's counting. Um, ex, uh, it's counting by by heat dispersal uh which would be the dether right right uh so um let let's 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 come right back to that let me do this what's on the screen here um and then and then it's going to spark some new new things i think uh no pun intended uh so this is the big bone lick this is where uh, uh there was a massive collection of mastodons mammoths ground sloths etc that Thomas Jefferson had uh, come to study and become the first uh, North American vertebrate anthropologist. And uh, he specifically had asked the, the Delaware about what happened to the animals at this, at this site. And they do actually have a site on the, the loop uh, here. So you can see where the building, you can see the buildings are here in the, in the center. 
uh, and then you hike down um, and there's uh, sulfur springs uh, here and salt, uh, salt and sulfur come out of the ground. Uh, and just naturally, they're not hot. They're just they're just uh, natural. And, I, and obviously, the water flows from this larger V-shaped hill uh, down into that into that valley. And the question is, why why would there be sulfur when there's no volcan volcano here? Now, what the natives said was that the great man had come and stamped his foot. Now, on the trail, they 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 say that they're uh, the great man. Uh, they they have a sign that says it's it's. Uh, one of these hills and when we look we do see interesting uh features and sometimes these are man-made though so we have to always back them up uh, starting just just uh, across the road um there's this strange feature and what looks like a bulbing bulging section coming out of the hill very unnaturally uh that doesn't appear to be normal so there's that and then and then across from uh the the hill there are these uh strange formations this finger one that's coming off to the left and then there's this this large uh triangular one with what looks like burn mark but that's might be just the standard deviation filter okay so uh what i did was i pulled up the google earth and it's a little rotated this is the feature on that finger i'm sorry not the finger the bulge um so it's not a um a, a, it's not an obvious um, like man-made structure. So it would take, you know, me to go there and actually see what it is. Um, but it could be, it could be an Indian mound. I don't really honestly know what that is. All right, so that, that's, the, that's, the, that's the shape here on this bulge on the, on the right. Okay, so now I'll zoom back out and we'll look at the, uh, the burned hill. So I'm gonna call them. I'm gonna call that the bulge. This the burned hill. It's not exactly obvious. Uh, so there's a lot of forestry. That's gonna make it hard. It's gonna make it hard. But I don't see any man-made structure. That doesn't mean though that this isn't a man-made structure. It is rather circular and round. You guys see that? Now uh, I've zoomed in on the. The lidar, yeah, it, does, it looks man-made to me, um, but I don't see anything. Circular obvious. formations are very common in nature. Yeah, that, that's the thing is I don't see anything obvious here, but there could have been something done in the 1800s too. Um, okay, so I'm going to zoom back out of on Google Earth and then go to the the finger. Well, so as here's far as I could see it as well, Ramon. Uh, a lot of these, if if that is uh, um, a wall around around the a round wall on top of the uh, hill, uh, and, the and it looked like there might be a well uh, inside that. And if it is, then it it correspond with the other fortifications. Um, well, I mean, you never know. There's there's no to to my knowledge, there's no legends about fortifications at this site. But now the finger the finger is clearly farmed. I think that what we're seeing there is probably um, probably lumber uh, roads um, and, and old terracing, like farming terracing. Yeah. I think that this is a, a Native American fortification or anything, but you never know, right? I mean, this is a, it could have been Civil War, could have been all sorts of stuff. Um, I'm not seeing it, but it's again, it's not a pool. Uh, or or a well or anything. So I'd have to go to this this house and I'd have to ask the the people at this house what uh, what what's the deal with the the geology of this of this finger hill. So the I don't see any outright. I'll be I'll admit there I don't see any outright Paradian thunderbolt. Uh, it's strike. a mine. Uh, maybe mine. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, yeah. looks like a mine. Yeah. Yeah, you could can be, see the layers. Uh, Ancient yeah, I mean, miners, alt mine. Who knows what it what it what it could have been? But that's that. Of course, what we were looking for is signs of a of a, a giant thunderbolt. Um, I think the best the best hope is actually not the hill that they identified on their little sign, but but this this bulge, because I don't know what this feature is. 
and and it's exciting but it's I, i'm i always temper my excitement because lidar as useful as it is like one time the akha we went out we thought for sure we were looking at like an ancient fort or a, or a, a you know a, a cosmic egg or even a serpent mount or something like that and it turned out to be a, a town that was made for either lumbering or something and it was so old that the force had come back the road had been eroded and all the so-called earthwork was actually old road from a town that only existed in the late 1800s to the mid 1900s and then had died and gone away. Uh, so whatever whatever this formation is, it's fascinating though because of the the, the egg shape of it. It's almost like an egg motif. Yeah, uh, and I think if there's a well in there, that's a double fascinated. Yeah, well, you know, that's the thing is when I, when I zoomed in on it, um, you know, I didn't see, let me zoom back in. I didn't see a well, but it wouldn't surprise me. It did look like... Could, could that rain structure, that pimple-like thing be a well? Or the... Uh, well, it could be a mound, too. I mean... Um, a mound, yeah, possibly. Look at this. It looks like a cosmic egg. <laughs> it looks like it has the the uh, flat bud on the north side there, or the, the what's up to us, and, and then the elongation... Um, let me do a quick measurement while we're on call. Uh, I'm going to use that outer edge, that outer trim. So that's a 20, 24.5 centimeters. And then this upper edge to whatever that thing is on the south side of that is 13 point, 13.4 run the calculator here. See if it's in one of the the standard uh, widths. I'm not I'm not saying that this is a cosmic egg motif. I'm just saying it's it's interesting. <laughs> 13 by 8. 13.4 <laughs> by 8. One that's a 1.8 ratio. 1.8 ratio is a little off. 1.82. There is a is a group of of eggs around the world that are at 1.75 to 1.78, but um, so that would be a little unusual. I think I think it definitely warrants me going and talking to the landowner, though. I, I think that finding out who owns this land and what that originally was, because as far as we know, it could have also been an ancient cow pond, you know. And they put an island, they put an island in the middle just because they wanted to have an island, and then it, then it drained away because the the you know, a flood or you know. We, there's so many things that could happen, but it's interesting that it's, you know, on one of the hills adjacent. And this bulge, to me, looks not quite what the flow of the of of the hill wants to do. I don't know. It's just to my eye, um, like it could have been raised. But if it was an anode, if it was raised up by a thunderbolt, and then yeah, it could have fried all these animals. But you know me, I was focusing on the. I, I was you know the, to be traveling. You know the the, the uh, elephants uh, and woolly mammoths they uh, they all die in the same place, right? The elephant graveyard. So. Uh, yeah, I mean maybe, but these were also on sloths. There's it's just a massive collection of of uh, of animals. Um, so I think they will have been washed along the valley. Uh, now, which way they have been washed? Uh, yeah, but I think they'll have all been washed and uh, kind of beached in the same place. Well, I don't know. That's just what the Delaware Indians told Thomas Jefferson is that they died by thunderbolt. Oh, really? I didn't hear yeah. that part. Yeah, yeah. But that's oh, the thing so is like that's uh, a beautiful history. That looks crazy. They don't really Wrong. specify where the great hill that, that the, the great man came and sat upon and stamped his foot. They don't specify where he did that. They just said on the great hill above, but what does the great hill above mean? Does it mean literally adjacent to it? Like the archeologists have interpreted and put on the sign, which the sign didn't include great man or squatter man or Thomas Jefferson or Delaware Indians. They called it the great spirit, you know, it's kind of a, or the way they do with Indians, you know, turn them into, uh, you know, a, a spirit. All right. Global electric circuit. <laughs> uh Andy, did you did you say something? I feel like Andy. Yeah, yeah, I said um from where I'm sitting it looked like a troll. 
sitting under the bridge. <laughs> uh, a what bridge? A troll sitting under the bridge. Oh, Nick would know. Nick, Nick would. <laughs> I see, yeah, yeah, an old. Uh, I don't know. I'm again. I'm not seeing a predator. It looked like it had ears. It looked like it had ears. And and, but, and, and, and like, but just because I don't. Just because I don't see a Paradian Thunderbolt doesn't mean that there isn't one directly in the area. But there are, again, these interesting features that warrant more visits and, and, and meeting the landowners and seeing if there are any local legends uh, outside of the one I mentioned. You so know, I think why, although these, these yeah. river structures on the north side of the hill, uh, above, above <laughs> where the, uh, that, the strange little structure, yeah, all that, all that lot, it looks like it's all really been weathered a lot by water or something has caused oh, yeah. all these ridges oh, on this particular way. hill but nowhere else uh, oh i see what you're saying you're saying like as if um as if the, it wasn't formed uh it wasn't formed before and had more you know had more water but then it came up and then extra water was was uh attacking the hill that's why could you just see me a little ramon could you just see me on the uh it's, it's, it's lost the view that i was trying to yeah, you're right. There is an inordinate amount of deeply grooved creek drainage here. Yeah, looks on the north like, side. Looks like a little bit of the desert southwest in just this section. Uh, you're not wrong that's there. Because it, that's because that's it comes uh, direct from the from the hillside. Uh, it looks like it's all drainage that goes directly into the river off of the off of the mountain. Yeah, but it's interesting because but his point is, is that, that, that other, the about. other hills that. look like that. Oh well. Uh, uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know that you know that south side facing hills and west side facing hills um, are different because you'll have foliage on one and nothing but um, desert on the other. We don't. So that yeah, we, be, don't was that. Saying we don't that, yeah. That we don't have that here in Kentucky. Um, there are balls. Every down, mountains. Every um, mountainscape has that. Well, I'm, I'm telling you that these are all covered, like jungle. It's all jungle. Oh, like, right, right, right. It, it's it's straight up. If Kentucky wasn't farmed, it would be jungle. And it, and it was when the pioneers came there. There were, you know, uh, giant trees uh, far as the, a, a squirrel could hop all the way from the Blue Ridge Mountains to the Mississippi River and never touch the ground. It's the uh, oldest. It's the oldest mountain range in the world, right? Uh, well, they say that, about the Appalachians. but these these aren't technically the Appalachians. That's the interesting thing about it, right? This is this is uh, the area of Kentucky, close to the Ohio River. Um, that it's not part of the uh, the Appalachian Range. Blue Ridge. No, no, no. This is all completely separate. You have to here. I'll zoom out and show you what I mean. So here, you can see this dark black over here. That's the that's the uh, Daniel Boone or Sheltowee Ley Line. And then to the east of that is the Appalachian Mountains. And then this this light gray here is the bluegrass region. And then all of this around is called the Highlands. And then the knobs are this dark region arcing around um, just a little south of the Kentucky River. You can see the Kentucky River snaking through. Um, and that, that Kentucky River is what cuts through the oldest, the second oldest stone uh, exposed in the world. And then the the knobs region where all those Lichtenbergs are are this dark stuff down here on the left, and then the the uh, the Mammoth Caves, which are the world's longest caves, and then they have all those pock marking like machine arc discharge. They're to the southwest of those knobs down in this uh, this kind of a, a little bit of a of a collection here. And that's a national park. It's almost like two national parks because you have the surface part of the national park that has really interesting geology and you have the caves underneath. Um, and there's actually also the world's fourth longest caves in the same area. And they're only separated from each other by a few hundred feet. Uh, so something very interesting was happening there for sure. Uh, yeah. there's, a, there's a potential Thunderbolt site in the Fort Knox. So Fort Knox is here in these knobs. You see how the knobs arc uh, kind of uh, to the left and then up uh, towards Indi uh, towards Indiana. Uh, Fort Knox is in there uh, at the at the tip, and there is a dome there that I haven't been able to explore yet because it's on the base. 
and I'm not sure what kind of dome it is, if it's a salt dome or, or anything. It's very hard to find any geological studies about it that aren't controlled, of course, by the military. And Fort Knox is still considered a top secret base, despite everybody knowing what it's supposed to be uh, for. So, um, do you think, do you think that, that this could be from uh, ancient miners? Uh, instead of thunderbolts, like, it, it, what? have you? Have you heard the, uh, did you heard, hear what um, our episode okay. with Michael Ferreira? Uh, no, but th that what could be from ancient miners. You have to be specific. Oh, um, all of this seeming electrical discharge. Uh, no, that he, we're... no, he's full of shit. No, this is, so first of all, these you are. Don't think that, you don't think that, that, uh, that all of the caves could have been metals? before that were previously mined so they were mined but but they weren't man, mined by uh, uh people to the extent what they would go in and, and get is saltpeter uh gypsum and down in the fluorospar region they got they would mine the indians would mine fluorospar um and then in the uh the caves that are to the they're in the uh the shelter we lay line and not the knobs uh to the east uh, they got a lot of uh, limestone and uh, saltpeter, but uh, you know we have we have the actual charcoal dating. People would sign their names in there with charcoal back in the 17 and 1800s. Uh, but no, no, these caves were not made by made by people. Now, as for whether some of them were made by electricity, that that's a good question. But most of the evidence is fluvial. But you can see here the Lichtenberg. Look at how it's flat on the top. Uh, and this is the main, this is the main branch of the knobs and you can see the Lichtenberg come out from there. And this is the region that I said I was driving around and, and, and that, and it got me high. I was driving on, uh, uh, gravel switch road. looks like, I think it was my, my 37. Uh, and, uh, the whole region is electrical, but the question is, you know, what was attracted to this region? Why did it sweep in an arc? Uh, well, what if, what if it's this way? What if it's just the fact that it's it's electrical still? The whole thing, water is plasma. It deteriorates like plasma, leaves a residual vestige of of a Lichtenberg flow style branching because it's moving in a minim, minimum energy circuit to find the lowest ground of water. I mean, you can see the it, difference it between the fluvial, you can see the fluvial behaviors versus the Lichtenberg behaviors. Um, just you can just compare the knobs right there, the dark part with what's on the left there in the uh, the Kentuckiana and the Kentuckiana uh, in between the two. This whole region, you see the you see the Kentuckiana, how fluvial it looks and how cracked. Those are all those are all gorges. And then you can see the knobs, which are all raised in the dark. Well, in between that is all the so-called karst region. The only difference between the karst region and everything else is that they have these these sinkholes. You know, supposedly they're all sinkholes, but the problem with that theory is that all of Kentucky is limestone. Uh, if it ain't limestone, picture. it's all limestone. It's all karst. Uh, it, under Lexington, there's caves. There's caves under me right now. Uh, but uh, for some reason, surrounding the this arc of of Lichtenbergs uh, the, of the Knob region here, and then especially east of the Mammoth Caves. Um, is a just an endless series of these these pock marks uh, that look just like machine art discharge, but that that's far away from the big bone lick. I mean, not, not far away, but you know, it's pretty far. Uh, it's a uh, several hours away, and I, I just I just haven't seen any evidence yet. Everybody keeps saying that all these all these mountain ridges, just all these mountain ridges and rivers and everything, and and I understand it looks like. Lichtenberg figures and, and lightning and stuff and like it could have been formed by lightning but I just got to play devil's advocate like you see these same type of topological structures all over the world it was the whole globe sculpted by uh lightning or is there is there other uh, um you know other things well, I think the water follows the energetic pathways anyway I think yeah. uh, if the, the if, the Lichtenberg, if the Lichtenberg patterns, uh, you know, dug out these ridges, and then the, I think I think they were more conductive places that that 
that got dug out more. Um, you can see the difference, uh, fellas. The problem with your with your theory is that you can see you see the burnt the the spot. It's all flat here, and then it moves out in, in Lichtenberg uh, formations here. Water can't make flatness. Trace. Right? It, can't make, it can't make the top flat. It can carve the, and there's definitely fluvial coming out of it. You can see the fluvial uh, around it, but the central ridges here, they're moving uh, the way that le electricity does. And aside from that, we already have a Paradian Thunderbolt site in Kentucky. So, so now, do you think that it could have been it could have been made from uh, ancient telluric currents under the ground that initially aggregated this structure together in a uh, yeah, like that's what I think, yeah. Yeah, there's, there's, so you bring up a really good point, and this is what I've told people. The problem with the Thunderbolts Project's uh, theories about Venus is that this appears to be more from a Genesis period where you had a higher energy state, like a, a constant uh, introduction of an electric flow into the planetary electric circuit from uh, from Smosh. Yeah. Right? Uh, and then later on, of course, reaffirmed uh, by... Uh, either uh, proto-Saturn or Jupiter, proto-Jupiter, uh, uh, during the age of the gods when suddenly hills were being cast up and, and thrown down. But the difference is the size of what was being cast up and thrown down in the biblical era is smaller than the regions that we're talking about or than the Grand Canyon or than the Patagonia, et cetera, which indicates to me a higher energetic structure. And that higher energetic structure to me would be a star or like I say, uh, a continuous circuit connecting uh, con connecting the two, because the Paradian so, Thunderbolt is very small; it's only one mile wide, and that I was can make definitely in, in instigated by Jupiter. Uh, and they, there's a lot of evidence of them worshiping the Great Man uh, in this area. Um, but it's as big as it is to us, you know, 56, 56 craters a mile wide uh, all together. Each crater is still only a couple hundred feet wide. That that's a very small structure compared to the energy we're talking about when when you're raising these Lichtenberg figures or raising Ayers Rock or Stone Mountain in Georgia, et cetera. I mean that that's a lot of electricity, and it probably came from a more Genesis period of the of the formation of the planet, or an ancient or an ancient civilization that advanced to the point where they um, they were mining that. they were mining no. the earth. I don't uh, believe that. I don't believe that. Humans I, don't, I don't have it. It looks like a living com ca capillary structure to me. We, we, I mean, even if you with looked all at small skin under a microscope, I think you'd see the same kind of shapes. Even with even with our even with our uh, all of our uh, our hydrogen bombs and stuff now, there's we can't we couldn't do this. I we know. Do yeah. But you can see the difference between the fluvial on the north and, and south. Of, of the the knobs region versus the actual knobs and what's interesting like i say is they don't except in a couple places they don't exceed 950 feet of elevation um and that's at the green river knob and at the pilot knob and pilot knob of kentucky looks just like the pilot knob in north carolina they both are um they're lifted and then suddenly it's almost like a whole column of rock has been shot up almost like devil's tower but not quite as extreme you know, you know how glaciers form oftentimes, right? Um, it's uh, not. You guys continue this. I'm going to help the patient. I'll be right back. Okay. So glaciers form oftentimes by um, by hot pressure, pressurized water that gets pushed up through the mountain. This is also, if you can think of um, pyramid fire down fire in the center of the mountain. That's what pyramid is, right? Now, uh, glaciers are built by this water that comes up to the top of the altitude and it just keeps pumping and pumping and pumping. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, some of some glaciers are built that way. Um, probably like Alpine, some Alpine glaciers. Some are built from altitude, you know, just being high and always constant snow. Um but what I'm getting at here is you can zoom in anywhere on the world in any mountainous region or in any um, Amazonian region or anything and get patterns that look just like this. This 
it, just because it looks like lightning might have made it doesn't mean lightning made it or big huge mile wide lightning um we would have to well, see well no it doesn't and uh, you know hydrologists uh, you know this is why i'm interested in langdon at the moment because if if this area was at one point under ice, I don't know. I don't suppose the ice sheet got as far south as this, uh, as far as we know. I don't know. But uh, if it was, uh, say there was a mile of ice on top of all this, it would have compressed the water into the rock. It would have soli- you know, made it soluble into all the limestone. Yeah. And there'd, be, there'd be absolutely enormous quantities of water uh, circulating around underground as well as on top of the ground. Uh, and and uh, limestone has very uh, well. Of course, it's a soluble rock for one thing, and uh, uh, um, yeah, it creates ca- these cave systems. These are all conduits for uh, charge, aren't they, through the Earth's surface? Um, oh yeah. And and also when the when the ice then melts, the the water starts. Uh, it creates aquifers. And cause can squeeze out the the top of wells right on top of the mountains, and this is what the ancients were exploiting. They they'd stick a well right on top of the highest point in the region, and be able, and the water and the aquifer would just pump the water up there, because it's only been pierced in that one place. Yeah. And, uh, so, um, so it is well worthwhile ch- checking out these circular structures on top of the hills. Um, but uh, I do. I by the look of this lot, it looks it looks like an electrical uh, discharge to me. And not only that, it seems like um, it, it almost seems like the capillaries in a lung or something. They seem they they very evenly distributed the uh, I suppose the, uh, uh, the the ability to uh, maybe transport water over the surface. Or the ability to uh, transport charge over it down these kind of down these lines that carry on join and join up uh, into bigger structures, uh, bigger gorges. But uh, the, like the interesting thing is, there's there's not there's no um, there's no sign of an anode cathode kind of uh, structure, um, you know, with that crooked smile that they talk about. So whether and I think you would get one of those with um, with a, a big thunderbolt strike. This 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 might have been um, the charge working over thousands of years to create this uh, landscape. Uh, in you know in and and also uh, if if the wa- if the water's more charged, is it more soluble to the ca- uh, to the carbon cal- calcium carbonate? Uh, you know does would that add to its uh, its erosional uh, pattern ability? You know the the fact that you might have more charged water, maybe. Um, would it accelerate the land formation? Uh, you know the type of the type of structures we're seeing, but they do all have that dendritic kind of look to them. All those uh, all these river systems, to be honest, they do have a uh, and even down to all the little mountains off them. Yeah, it's, uh, it's compression and rarefaction. It's pressure and the release of pressure is what it is. Yeah, I think I think so too. I think so too. And it, it seems to happen it, it, ev- it, everywhere rather than going from one point to another. It seems to be, a, you know, quite a balanced kind of uh, effect by the look of it. I don't believe I don't believe all this. I don't believe in the majority of what people present for uh, electric universe geology. Uh, a lot of it, I don't, a lot of it, I just, it's, I have a hard time believing it. Um, but I don't know there's so many ancient myths that talk about it, uh, that it's really hard to deny. Well, I, I think, I think it certainly happened, uh, because I think, you know, all right, that thunderbolt that caused all the deaths of these animals uh, in one particular, I'm interested that they all wound up in one spot. Uh, so I mean, it, it, f- for me, that kind of uh, that would kind of indicate there was a lot of water washing around while this storm was happening. Um, and so maybe you did have both. 
maybe it was yeah. the effect of you know water and that, electricity. Well, you know that you that, know that. Yeah, it comes back to what you were talking about earlier with collective consciousness. You know, if you talk about and and like when you look at this, you know, I know Ramon says I. Oh, you know, you've got to have a massive thunderbolt. But then a couple of you blokes are involved in martial arts and that. Well, as I understand that, power in it is not in power, the, the sort of like brute force. It's 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 more rhythmic, ry- rhythmical, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. You know what I mean? Like, <clears throat> you get what I mean by that, buddy? And so what I'm saying is, I agree with, 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 with what you're saying in that, over a period of time, with just the right frequencies and forces, you will develop. Those things will happen, and you know it will change and move around. And I think we equate things. I think sometime in the 1920s, especially, we're at a crossroads of going down, uh, for want of a better word, the explosive path or the non-explosive path, and World War II took us down the explosive path. So we equate all these things to how many nuclear bombs would it take me to create it when it was probably created with not a great deal of force at all. Yeah, I no, I, I agree with you that. With uh, now, I think there can be these cataclysmic structures that um, you know, I, I think these can happen. Uh, I think they can There is, there has been massive thunderbolt exchange between the planets, but I think, I think these systems are part of an ongoing process, um, and they're not necessarily completely yeah. uniform, but they they I happen agree. according to the cycles and the Schnell effect. Yep, and they happen also according to astrological astrologically significant events yes. um and and that's why people people uh a lot of people talk about it and then there's a lot of the naysayers um because they don't want to believe that it happened and uh because of the stars but it actually happened because of the solar electric circuit alignment yeah yeah totally and the way on the way that the charge jumps from planet to planet yeah, I think you're right on to something there, there, buddy, with that GEC. With the with the what? Yeah, just the global electric circuit. Oh yeah, dude. Um, you know, you tie that you tie that directly into Laonikia, um, and it's the it's the large uh, galactic structure, the super galactic structure, and that that is another name for that is the great attractor there's a we're being attracted uh there's a large in our super cluster we're being attracted to a great attractor no one knows what the great attractor is but everything's going towards it <laughs> you know um yeah. well it's, it, a, it's, it's the a idea circuit. that uh it's the same idea that we evolve towards um, we, we're being attracted towards a particular shape uh, an evolutionary shape that uh you know as we uh, as we uh, go up that evolutionary tree as what they call it uh there's there's some ideal platonic human being that we're going to uh, uh, achieve according according to this idea of the great attractor uh, now, whether that bears any any relation to what's where, you know, the state of our ascension or descension, devolution. Uh, but the, yeah, the greatest the great attractor is a is a concept in chaos theory, isn't it? That uh, you know, no matter how cha- chaotic uh, uh, a system gets, it will it will uh, at some at some part of frequency range get, get back into a stable one. Um, a, a stable system will will appear out of a chaotic one, and and that's part of the great attractor. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a it all breaks down to really simplistic. Um, all chaos breaks down into very simple, repetitive um, initial conditions. Um, 
if, if, if you study chaos, which I've, I've uh, studied my whole life, um, not chaos magic or any of that stuff, chaos mathematics, um, you get into self-similarity, you get into fractals, you get into incommensurability, you get into uh, a bunch of stuff. But the initial condition is uh, under chaos is the initial conditions and the initial boundary conditions and that's always very simple parameters we yeah that's are, right and then you, and then you've got a feedback circuit yeah we are that open window of order that is always causing massive chaos and um any living creature is because it can it it's we are the global electric circuit we eat the global electric circuit the global electric circuit eats us and spits us out you know yeah, we're part of it. Yeah, we're all part. We're yeah. totally part of just, it. A living system. Yeah, I was it's just a eating a one. beat. I was just eating a beat, and I haven't had a beat in a long time, and I also haven't been eating the best, and I haven't been taking my vitamins. This beat just put me into euphoria, like like bliss. I was just sitting here eating this beat, and I'm like, oh, my God, I t had two of them. And I'm sitting there also eating a little Caesar's piece of pizza, and I'm like, I'm like man, this beat is just like gold compared to this pizza. Yeah. <laughs> this piece of pizza. Yeah, beetroot. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, gentlemen, I think I'm going to split and uh, see how my garden's getting on. And uh, and uh, maybe do a little, maybe do a little computing tonight, maybe. <laughs> so, so. Um, All right. Well, enjoy, enjoy yourself and. Uh, I can't wait till it's time to plant here. I'm just, I'm eating this beetroot and then, uh, eating fruit, fresh vegetables and stuff. And I can't wait to start planting. It's not. Oh well, yeah, I've got, I've got, I've got something I'm, I'll be interested to show you pretty soon, buddy, because uh, you know that you know this program Blender. Um, yeah. Have you, I don't know if you've ever used it, but it's um, I can use it pretty well, reasonably well. And uh, and of course you can make three D, you can anything that'll go in a game really. But I'm quite I'm quite interested in um, in some of the three D uh, archaeology. Uh, sorry, sorry, um, architecture. Um, and uh, you know, for example, the pergola on the front of your poster. Um, I'd, I'd be interested in drawing one of those three in 3D. In fact, drawing a little city made out of these kind of little buildings uh, in 3D, uh, because you'd be able to move around it then on a web on a web page. And yeah. uh, for example, you could go past the cinema and have all your, your your speakers sort of lighting up in neon lights, and then drive around the corner and you'll see the dancers or the you know all that kind of thing. But it's yeah. something that it's something that I can put on a web, um, um, build a website around the front of it. Um, it's just uh, it's just an interesting little thing I might be able to play with and uh, show you a demo of that as well. Um, yeah, that would be awesome. Um, I I'm, I would I would love more Blender tutorials. I forgot how to use it, so. Um, yeah, yeah. I, so I mean, I well, anyway, that's some that's something. Maybe we can work together on a little bit. I'll get a I'll get Blender up and we can run it on my sh my machine or your machine or whatever, you know. Sounds and, good. Uh, I already got it. I already got it up and running on mine. So uh, get it on your end and we can play around and um, we can throw images and mess around and uh, that'd be great. Well, that's it, and and then there's just this. There's a couple of line of codes that link you up, link you up to the Blend for Web uh, XMS um, uh, specifications, which then allows uh, allows your web anything to be played um, on your web page, and you can you can put movies on the images, twiz images around, so you can do all these cinematic effects and everything with it. Uh, you know, it's something I want. Another thing about the design studio, I want to get up and running on this um, on this um, uh, gateway. Uh, so anyhow, that's uh, that's just something to think about. Um, that that's I'm great. <clears throat> that's great. Um, that's exactly what I need uh, because uh, Thunderbolts just 
asked me to do a presentation and they want it to be more dynamic. So they want me to get into uh, like more motion and more like not just still pictures, you know, like zooming yeah. in on the pictures and things. Yeah, totally. So, so something like Blender would be very good for that. And uh, of course, also you've got JavaScript, uh, which uh, you can do um, pretty good little animations and physics animations with. Um, but Blender, is, I would say, is the, probably the best way because you know you could, you could actually write a full show in Blender, um, and uh, you know you could you could write the whole lot in Blender. They all right. show in it and, uh, you know, have things flying around on your screen and, you know, all sorts of annotations and music and sound and everything you want, really. Um, that sounds well, amazing. It, that sounds yeah, amazing. it'd be a good way to go. Yeah, I see your vision and I'm, I totally would love to help this come to fruition. Yeah, great stuff. Well, that's, some, well, that's, another, that's another one we'll have done by the end of this year anyway, so... Yeah, well, I'll love a list to get on with. <laughs> Brilliant. Right, Have a Brilliant. good one. Enjoy your uh, enjoy your garden. Right. Cheers, guys. See you soon. Yeah. Bye bye. All right. See you. Oh, 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 you guys are done. Okay. Well. Oh, sorry. Sorry, <laughs> Ronnie. Right. Saying something before I go. Go on. No, I'm. I'm. No, I'm here. Uh, I'm. I'm here. So. Um. Uh, it's Robert. okay. I just uh, we had been talking the electric sir, but I, I've got work to do. It's okay. You guys got to roll. Uh, it's it's no problem at all. Um, we'll we'll pick it up later, I guess, about the uh, connection of the the planetary electric circuit with the consciousness, and um, uh, I, I think it's a really important uh, discussion. You know, and the Chinese feng shui has a lot to offer in terms of yep. Um, of, of pseudoscience, at least. In agree, area. chaps. I agree. It's a great yeah. subject, yeah. this me, area, this one, okay. and uh, we can carry it on. Okay, let's do it on part Hello, two, guys. Okay. Hello, I have said a lot. I've, in, I've enjoyed it. Okay. Well, uh, great. And uh, I will talk to you guys a little later in the week. All right. <clears throat> See you all. all. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you for being here for episode 59 season five of the geometric view uh it is produced by me solely all the music and everything the geometric view is a love is watching product a love is watching being thank you for doing that keep your eyeballs out pay attention there's a lot going down this year be vigilant, be mindful, be insightful, be loving. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being kind. Share the love, spread the love, become the love. Amen. The 3D visualizations that you see here at the beginning and the ending are done by Abyssal Dionysus. Thank you for that.
life and death. Life, the cause, love, life, living to the fullest. Shout out! 
with the glories of God. Shout loud, shout loud through the glories of God. Shout loud, shout loud through the glories of God. Shout loud, shout loud through the glories of God. Shout loud. Surprise, submerge, 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 so fast, the first, the last of baptism, need to say more. Pay attention like the marrow in your bones, zero in your back, air in your lungs, zero into the fact you're hearing Christian neurons, synapses, and narrow endurance into eternity. I'm a courier, a charismatic attitude, modern meters, even meter, it might even be fun, cider indeed, need nerds, you need nerds, need a virtue, need to be for reason, feasibility to be a reason to be clean, it's over keys, open doors, signs of her directions, be the carrier of candlesticks, the man to brought you change, every second you ride, to make your ribbing, you pivot, but touching your curvy cat, could be cold, could be copycat, could be copy corpse, could be shorting your spouse, could be Michael Racker, Mackie Normo, open mind, itsy bitsy, freaking huge, a universal Super massive aspect of attached awareness. So aware of this all collaborative consumption. Are you aware of this all collaborative consumption? The new thing consumption. Is collaborative consumption. Consumption. Get up now. Bottom boat. Drop. Where did it so? We don't got them out of bottle of girl. But about a cause and not about a god of spirit. Get up, what's up? Get out of that girl. Spirit, 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 spirit. Search of. I'm an earth love, I'm in living life, I'm in living color, I'm an air drop, I'm an earth dang, I'm an earth dang, I'm an earth dang, I'm an earth dang.